So, you want to start working with Warbler. Warbler has been around for a pretty long time. Especially a few years back, everybody was using Warbler to craft props and armor. But to work with Warbler, you need foam. And to work with foam, you don't need Warbler. So that's why people have transitioned more to using foam on its own. But many people still use Warbler's finest art, since it's very reliable and most of all, very sturdy. It also just has some qualities that regular foam just doesn't have. So it's still a pretty good product. Of course, in this video, I will be talking about the Warbler we sell at CosplayShop.be. CosplayShop.be sells Warbler in sheets small to extra large. But what is Warbler? Well, it's actually a combination of two things. It's a thermoplastic, but it's also a wood flower filler. That's how it's called. This means it responds to heat and it also sticks to itself. So no glue needed. Which is very handy, but sometimes it can get stuck to the table. To avoid that, it's maybe best to just work on a piece of baking paper. You'll also have a better time cutting Robla with scissors instead of a knife. So here you have like a piece of Robla. As you can see on one side, it's rough. And on the other side, it's more shiny. This is the sticky side. So this goes on the inside most of the time. This goes on the outside of your prop. So Warbler sticks to Warbler and I'm talking about both sides here. So that means the rough side and the shiny side. But the shiny side stucks the best because this has literally an adhesive. It even sounds different. So you, here you have the rough side. You have the shiny side. So it's two complete different textures, but most of the time you can literally feel it when you warm up the warbler that the disc becomes very sticky. Just apply some heat with a heat gun and it softens. Don't use anything else to warm up your warbler, only a heat gun. And also beware that just like foam, you can burn your Robla. Now that it's soft, you can just shape it however you want. Once the Robla cools down again, it will be sturdy once more and keep its shape. Like this stuff gets really hard. The cool thing about it is you can repeat the heating process and the shaping process as much as you like. So if you're not happy with your shape, just do it again. However, once you glued Robla to Robla, you'll have a bad time trying to separate them again. So making a mistake can be very unforgiving sometimes. Overall, Warbler gets used in three ways. One, to cover your foam like I'm doing here with this two millimeter foam. You cannot make props and armor out of Warbler alone. You have to wrap it around something, best material, foam. Just repeat your foam pattern, but slightly bigger, cut off the excess corners, heat it up and fold it over the edges. Two, to sculpt things. This is very handy to add some details. Your Warbler leftover scraps are perfect for this. It's also very easy to just make circles with it around an object and make, for example, a chain. People have been sculpting some crazy stuff with this technique. Three, to cover a pre-existing item like I'm doing here with this skull. Just heat up the Warbler, cover your object and press it down firmly. Let it cool down and voila! Now, is Warbler sandable? The answer is yes, but also a little bit no. So I was using my Dremel on this piece of Warbler that I made and two things happened. One, I did remove some Warbler, as you can see I have dust on my table. And two, it caused it a bit to deform because a Dremel causes heat and heat causes Warbler to deform. Does that mean you can't Dremel Warbler? Of course you can, many people do it, but just be aware that it's not the same on foam. With foam, you Dremel it, you remove the excess, that's it. It can be good or bad depending on what you need. But of course this brown Warbler is not the only one out there. It's the one that gets used the most, but there are many more types of Warbler that you can use. I will go over them very quickly because there are some differences, but overall it's the same principle like the brown one. So as we talked about this brown warbler, you may have noticed that it has a bit of a rough texture, especially compared to foam. And maybe that's just not what you're going for. That's why Warbler's black art might be the perfect fit for you. So the black warbler is just the same like the brown warbler in that it has two sides. It is rough and it is shiny. And once again, the shiny side is the sticky side. But as you can see, the biggest difference we have here is that this is very smooth. So this is perfect if you want to create some metallic looks. If it's smoother than the brown or blah, why is not everyone just using this one? Well, it's less stretchy than the brown one and it's also not that adhesive like the brown one. So that's why. So it's a bit harder to work with. So this is the black warbler heated up, as you can see, very smooth. 
but it's just less stretchy and it will stuck not that well like the brown warbler, but it sticks nonetheless. So now it's really together, but still I can just peel it off. That's not something you can do with brown warbler. With brown warbler, once you stick it together, it's stuck. You cannot undo that. But of course, it's still an amazing product, very smooth, very good for metallic looks. Next to Warbler's black art, we also have the pearly art. This white Warbler has the same qualities as we discussed with the black Warbler, but it's white, that's the only difference. So maybe if you want a white base color to work on, this is the Warbler you need. Then we have the transparent Warbler. This is just the same like the other Roblas, but it's transparent. You can see through it. Now with transparent Roblas, you can see I am wearing a glove right now. That's because I have to heat up the transparent Roblas more than usual. It takes a lot of heat for these guys to warm up. And it's too hot to handle with just your bare hands. So as you can see, once heated up, it becomes very soft. A bit like with the black warbler, it doesn't stick that well together. So I can, once again, I can just peel it off. You cannot do that with the brown warbler. But if I just heat it up a bit more and then press it together for a long time, maybe in a weird shape, it will stay there forever. This stuff is great, by the way, if you're trying to recreate, for example, a flame. So with some LEDs and then you can like sculpt a flame with this stuff, it's amazing. Also, transparent robot doesn't leave much room for errors because as you can see, this just happened and I cannot fix that again. Just beware to keep it clean because this one can get very dirty and you don't want a dirty transparent look on your build. I think of all the types of Robla, this is the most special one. So I might make another video on this one day. Maybe not, maybe I will. Furthermore, we have the Cobra Cast art. And if you look at it from up close, you will see that it looks like it has some tiny holes in it. And that's why people use this to sew through. Cobra Cast is not only very stretchy when working with it, it's very thin, very lightweight, but it becomes very sturdy once cooled after using a heat gun. Then we have the meshed art. When we zoom in on the whole thing, it looks like reinforced concrete. And believe me, it works like reinforced concrete. It gets used a lot on the inside of the prop. So not on the outside, it's not really for finishing, but if you want to make something sturdy, meshed art is what you need. And there you have it, a very quick and beginner's guide to Warbler. Now, if you want to get deeper into this subject, I can recommend Kamui Cosplay on YouTube. She has some tutorials on it. And I remember she also had a video on how to make a Warblot chest plate. So go check her out. If you have even more questions, you can always leave them in the comments down below or even join our Discord. And just like that, we have reached the end. I hope this video was helpful. If it was, please leave a like, wink wink. I'm Skyshark and I will see you in the next one.